Hello everybody, this is me, Sam K for Wubi Gaming, and today we're going to learn how to install and use permissions. So, first of all, what is permissions? Um, permissions is um, like a group manager system that basically stops players and allows players to do certain things according to plugins. So, for instance, plugins will have nodes, which I'll go into the detail, but you can add these nodes to uh, groups of users and this just defines what they can do, what commands they can run in game. So first of all I'm just going to show you how to install it. So you want to go ahead and download it. So there's a nice download button. Um, link will be in the description of course. So uh, using your favorite R driver, I'm using WinRAR, you want to drag both the permissions jar and the permissions directory into your plugins directory. So now that's done, let's go into the permissions directory and you'll see a rename me.yml. So how permissions works now is that it's a uh, world specific. So depending on your worlds, um, it will have a different set of groups. So for main from most uh, servers it's just gonna be the world, it's gonna be the world name. Of course, set this as a default world, um, depending on what server you have. So let's open this up. Now I recommend opening it up in uh, either Notepad++ or I'm using WordPad for now. I wouldn't recommend opening it in Notepad as um, it's very uh, iffy when it comes to all the spaces and checking and I'll show you how to do that later. So let's just um, see what's important. So first of all you want to scroll down here. Anything with a hash sign in front of it, it's just ignored so you don't have to bother with those lines. So this is how the group system works. So as you can see we have three groups, so default, moderator, and admin. So let's go over what each bit of the thing does. So first of all, first of all, define the name of the group. So this is called default colon, and then we're going to set this as the default group to true. Notice that anything other group is set to false. We also then start an info box. So this is the prefix. So whenever they say something, this will be the text in front of their name so we can also use color codes or whatever suffixes will, will come after their name and uh, building is whether or not they can build so can they place blocks can they destroy blocks so that's set to false by default and then yeah so we also have inheritance now default is the default group so it has no inheritance however moderator does so Inheritance basically will add all the commands, all the permission nodes from the previous group. So, for instance, um, moderator has the node bar.foo and it inherits default, so it will have foo.bar as well, but default will only have foo.bar. <laughs> that makes sense, yeah. And we actually have admins, which only has one node, which is the star, which just means all nodes. This is quite useful. So I'm going to make a new group. So I'm just going to call it a builder group. So copy and paste it, and making sure that now because it's YML, it's very like space sensitive. So you have to ensure you don't use tabs or anything. And I'll show you a good way to check it. So I'm going to make a builder class. So we're going to set this as a, a not default class, but we're going to inherit the default class, but so we're going to make this inherit the builder class, the builder. Uh, we're going to set build to true, and these are the permissions. So let's. Uh, so that's all done. Control S to save that, and just any warnings. Now this is how you check it. So Control A, Control C, and then I'll give a link on the description. But if you go to uh, ymlonlineparser.appspot.com, this just parses the YML file and checks it for errors. So if I just go ahead and paste that in there, you can see uh, if it's like this, it means no errors. So let's uh, create an error in the file. So say, for instance, I didn't put a space here next to builder, convert it to YML, and as you can see, it's got um, an error code here saying on line 70, column 4, the, the line builder has something wrong with it. So I go, oh, look, I forgot a space. Hit one in, bam, fixed. Okay, so that's how that works. Um, 
I also need to go right. So with uh, these permission nodes, each uh, plugin will have its own permissions node. So for instance, my Levelcraft plugin, you would add the permission node level dot lc, and then I have one for each one, so I have digging and stuff. But I'm just going to add the node admin. So that's how you add a node, and you can just do that multiple times for every node you want. And for instance, with Levelcraft, this is just an example, there are lots of other nodes out there. But if I, for instance, I have LC dot and then I have digging, for example, um, what you can do, instead of typing all them out, you can put a star next to the, the node uh, part. So this will just enable me every level available to me. Uh, that's just an example, but there are other examples out there. Uh, each, uh, if you look on the thread of the plugin, it should tell you um, what node to add. So once you've done that, this is how to add um, players to the group. So let's have a look at this one first. So the number one Yeti is in the group admins, and any extra, any extra permissions it has none. So whenever the Yeti uh, joins the server, he'll be put in the group admins. And uh, we also have another player here, who's called Herpina. Uh, they're in the group moderator, and as you can see, we can add custom prefixes and suffixes to that individual player by doing info, prefix, uh, mu, suffix, cap. And that's how you do that. So we've added the permission specifically for Herpina called herp.derp. And uh, that's how that works. So if we close that now, we want to save. You might want to check it again. So if we now, now if you want to create world specific permissions, you just you can copy this and just paste and then the, put the world name dot the wire mount. But I only have one world at the moment, so I don't need to do that. So just start the server up. It will create any necessary files. And if you have any errors, um, normally, if it has anything to do with permissions, you need, you'll need to check uh, your YML file for errors to just parse it like I've shown previously. And uh, there are, you should have permissions, Phoenix was initialized, permissions version, blah, blah, loaded. So if we just open that again, I think, okay, cool. So that's uh, that concludes today's tutorials. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, if you have any queries, don't feel free to ask on the thread or message me or use the YML parser. It's probably your best bet first off. So uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is me, Sam Cooper Gaming. <sighs> this is me, Sam Cooper Gaming, signing out.